Okay. Always on the trail for the truth. I'm from the Swinomish and Tulalip tribes here in Washington state. Matika Wilbur is a filmmaker and photographer. I've been to over 400 tribal communities. And also a podcaster. Welcome back to another episode of All My Relations. Seeking out indigenous stories. And the most celebrated are portrayals of, in, of myths. Her work involves traveling the country. One of her many stops was in Massachusetts. When I was in Wampanoag territory, I was deeply taken back by the story of Thanksgiving. As people sit down this year, what would you hope people would think about? Thanksgiving, it's a mythical story that is a nice story. It's an easily digestible story. Till we are honest with one another about the first stories of this land and the first people of this land, we can't move forward. It was a topic discussed in her podcast with scholars that are members of the Wampanoag tribe, Linda Coombs and Paula Peters. We flew to Massachusetts to meet them. My ancestors went through this horrific experience. It makes me angry my ancestors were treated so badly, but there's a certain amount of satisfaction that comes from being able to bring the story out. Peters was photographed by Wilbur. It's one of the nicer pictures that's ever been taken of me. The vibrance of Wampanoag culture is undeniable at Peters' um, store in Mashpee, Massachusetts. Pasik, Nis, Nash. Do you like learning the language? Yeah. Here, she teaches her children, their ancestors, true history. I think it's really important to look back, especially around this 400th anniversary. According to historians, in the 17th century, pilgrims broke away from the Church of England for religious reasons. They went to Holland, where they were free to practice their religion. But after about a decade of struggles, including tough economic times, more than 100 men, women, and children boarded the Mayflower. After 66 days at sea, on November 11, 1620, the pilgrims arrived at Cape Cod. They eventually sailed up the coast to where the Wampanoag tribe had lived and settled in. Some books say a year later, the Wampanoag people and pilgrims happily gathered for the first Thanksgiving feast. That's the story you might have heard. There's just so much bunk around that. But Peter says that is not even close to what happened. To play along with it is to bury a lot of real history. A history you won't find on display here at Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock, it's supposed to symbolize where the pilgrims stepped off the Mayflower when they landed. This myth around the Plymouth colony that stamped right on the rock, 1620, that that's when everything begins, like that there was nothing that happened before or after. When it comes to Thanksgiving, Peters and Coombs are trying to separate fact from fiction. And that's what they want here too at the Mashpee Wampanoag Museum, where you can see reenactments like when the European traders were around a century before before the pilgrims came. There were ships coming over to this coast here since 1524. And what happened over the next 100 years set in motion a series of tragic events that would devastate the Wampanoag population. There was a huge plague that swept through, it came from European fishermen. What they call the great dying. There wouldn't even have been this space for the Plymouth Village if all of those people had not been wiped out by a play. The backstory also involves violent encounters with Europeans capturing Wampanoag people. People were sold into slavery in England or in Spain. So when the pilgrims arrive, Massasoit, a Wampanoag leader, had to carefully consider what to do. Massasoit decided to form an alliance with the English. It was more a strategic decision. It was not something that he was doing really out of the kindness of his art. They had weapons that we didn't have guns. And he's thinking of protecting his people. To say that we were making friends is just, it's ridiculous. And it dishonors history. And when it comes to the history behind the first Thanksgiving. It doesn't say the pilgrims invited the Indians. It just says it, so it showed up. It showed up with a hundred warriors. They came because they heard the sound of muskets, but it was certainly not, you know, oh, let's invite our, our Wampanoag neighbors to our harvest dinner. What happens afterwards? It's all really tragic. You have to do something with the people that are already there. And if you're not gonna kill them outright, which is a method that was used, then you do all these other things like 
Christianize them, educate them, try to make them like you. Over time, the Thanksgiving lore has rendered indigenous people almost invisible. There's a distinct memory that I have of being a, a second grader in, in school. The story was told by the teacher, and one of the other students said, what happened to all the Indians? And the teacher said, oh, they all died of a plague. And I had to raise my hand and say, no, they didn't, because I'm still here. I think it's ludicrous, because we've been disregarded and treated like our part in this history doesn't matter, like it or not like it. The history is what it is. And they came and took our land in order to start a colony here, and that's just the truth of it. It's time to bring out these stories of truth about indigenous people that are really important. That is exactly the mission Matika Wilbur is on. It's very uncomfortable to think about what happened in the settlement of America. I believe that our humanity encourages us to get to know one another. And to me, that's how we break down some of these barriers and we overcome some of these stereotypes is by being in good relationship with people that look different than us.